cost of being a disciple. Luke chapter 15. Great crowds were following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, If you want to be my followers, you must love me more than your own father and your own mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, more than your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And you cannot be my disciple if you do not carry your own cross and follow me. But don't begin until you count the cost. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Till you know the cost, don't fucking start. Because you don't know what you're getting into, and you're going to look like a fool if you don't continue this shit out when the road get tough and hard. And the road will get tough and hard. For who would begin construction of a building without first getting estimates and then checking to see if there is enough money to pay the bills? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of funds. And then how everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there is a person who started that building and ran out of money before it was finished. So my believers in Christ, you ain't trying to get clowned on, are you? So you better count the cost before you decide to be the boss. Or what king would ever dream of going to war without first sitting down with his counselors and discussing whether his army of 10,000 is strong enough to defeat the 20,000 soldiers who are marching against him? If he is not able, then while the enemy is still far away, he will send a delegation to discuss the terms of peace. So no one can become my disciple without giving up everything for me. Salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? Flavorless salt is good neither to the soil nor to the fertilizer. It is thrown away. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. So basically in a nutshell, he's warning you, you know, count the cost before you decide to follow Jesus. Because uh, the road ain't going to be easy. It's going to be a war, a spiritual warfare the rest of your life. And the stronger your calling or anointing, the stronger the adversary, the stronger the, the, you know, the enemy is coming at you. You know what I'm saying? Just to harass you. It can't destroy you, but just to harass you. You know? So, it is what it is, man. We pay the cost to be the boss, dog. When you really doing this shit, really being a Christian and all that, it's cool, but shit, it ain't for glamour, especially in the proper, I mean, well, I can only speak from the proper position. It ain't glamour. Nobody gives a fuck that my dreams come true, man. Or they do. Don't let me say that, man. It's not true. They do. People do. I mean, some of my dreams mean life and death for some people. You know, my dreams sometimes mean people going to heaven or hell kind of thing. Or, you know. So, I ain't saying that, man. And I'm thankful for life. Everything is fucking great. Great as can be. Not really. 
but fuck, I'm gonna tell myself that. I don't know. Nigga been slimming down a little bit, man. I guess the working out and shit. So, trying to do some shit. I don't know. But, we working on it, man. Slowly but surely. Nigga be having muscle spasms and shit. Trying to work out and just dealing with the pain. And we having a little like nerve problems and shit for my back for my back my lower back so pray for me for that shit nigga in love I'm willing to do what it takes to make Every shit, everything great. I'm here. She's worth the wait. But we'll see if she's gonna drop me. See if she ever gonna top me. Well, God bless everybody. Love y'all. Uh, so, yeah. Cost of being a disciple. Cost a lot. Cost you your life. If you do it right, it costs you your life. And I don't mean death. I just mean no longer your will, but the Father's will. You know? your boy man love y'all man shit i'm just sitting here for getting better at hooping well, i never thought i'd be able to hoop again so that's a good thing got a bright future ahead nigga just get tired of waiting shit I ain't doing, you know what I'm saying? I think of myself, you know, I I just gotta get on it, man. Get creative. Really put myself out there. I ain't never looked for no handouts from nobody ever. My basketball, I got in those places. I met those agents and uh, coaches professional coaches and all that shit. I did that. I know how to do that. When I want something, I know how to go get it. You know what I'm saying? And then it's on them. You know, if they want to open the door or not, you know what I'm saying? I go full force with my shit, though. I don't give a fuck. That's how I am. Whatever I want, I'm going to go full force with it. I'm gonna, I got a spirit of excellence. So... Uh, it, is. Power off. it is what it is, you know. But, uh, I love y'all, man. Like I say, I'm probably finna lose about, probably about 15, about 15, no pants. Get a little bit more cut on and shit. Get my shit right, man. You know? Shit, hopefully. Nigga start docking and shit. Cause that's gonna put a nigga through the roof. You can do that. But just filling my mind with greatness, man. Greatness, positivity, 
greatness, positivity, greatness. That's all I can do. That's all I will do. That's all I will allow in my life. So, uh, love y'all, man. Thanks for listening. Shit. We got a few more minutes. I want to listen to some more. Uh, uh. Story of the Lost Sheep. Tax collect the tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such despicable pe people, even eating with them. So Jesus used this illustration. If you have 100 sheep and, 100, and one of them strayed away and we lost and was lost in the wilderness, wouldn't you leave the 99 others to go and search for the lost one until you found it? Then, and then you would joyfully carry it home on your shoulders. When you arrived, you would call together your friends and neighbors to rejoice with you because your lost sheep was found. In the same way, heaven will be happier over one lost sinner who returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. So God is saying, you know, all y'all that are already saved, man, y'all saved, you know. You ain't got to put this much time on y'all. But, you know, he really looking for those lost souls, you know, the ones who... Think he don't love you and don't accept you, but he really does. You know, God is looking for you. He's looking for them prodigal sons and all those things. You know. Or suppose a woman. Okay, story of the lost coin. Or suppose a woman has ten valuable silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and look in every corner of the house and sweep away, uh, sweep every nook and cranny? until she finds it and when she finds it she will call in her friends and neighbors to rejoice with her because she has found her lost coin in the same way there is joy in the presence of god's angels when even one sinner repents so the angels are constantly watching stuff and you know they're very happy when sinners come back to god uh, I don't have time to read this one. Let me stop this and start another one.